Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Diving back into this USC class in the 2024 cycle as it's been a, a rough couple weeks for USC. Now, I kind of want to just take a step back and take a look at the big picture, right? I'm not going to get up here and say it was a good thing that Dakota Fields flips his commitment to Oregon or Manasseh Atiti flips to Florida State. That being said, you take a look at this 2024 class as a whole, and you combine it with what Lincoln Riley has been doing in the transfer portal, you still have to feel really good about what Lincoln Riley's doing in terms of a talent acquisition process, using the transfer portal effectively, still a very good class in 2024. But we're going to be talking about a few targets that USC could pivot to after losing guys like Manasseh Atiti and Dakota Fields flipping their commitments. Now, before we do, just want to say one thank you to you guys. It's truly been a blast talking this USC team. This has been the most supportive fan base to the boys out of any team in the country. Can't thank you guys enough for rocking with us like you guys have. So if you do enjoy the updates, you enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. But more importantly, we're going to be getting into a few targets for USC that they could pivot, not only pivot back to, but also turn up the heat on. I would like to hear what names you guys have in mind to add to this USC class in 2024. So drop those in the comment section. And let's get into it now. We haven't talked too much recruiting, one, because there hasn't been that much to talk about, and two, the season is less than a month away, and this USC team, if you guys have been listening to us all summer long, is legit a national title contending team, and I want to start there. Like, these guys can commit, they can decommit, they can do whatever they want. It kind of matters what they're doing in December when it's time to sign the dotted line and really enroll into a school, and this USC team, if they can make some serious noise, win a Pac-12 championship, make the college football playoffs, even win a national title, I think when you get the spatula out, and we've already seen spatula season start in terms of the flip commitments, this USC team could really close at a high level in December. But I want to talk about some names that we should be keeping an eye on as we go into the fall. And I want to start in the secondary room. I think Dante Williams has done a really good job cultivating a strong class in this 2024 class, right? Marcellus Williams from St. John Bosco still in the class. Marquis Gallegos, one of my favorite safety products in the whole entire country, still in this group. Jarvis Boatwright, Braylon Conley. They're, they're still a very good class, even when you lose a guy like Dakota Fields. And the first name I want to talk about is four-star cornerback Zabian Brown. He's committed to Alabama. This was a recruitment that it seemed like USC – kind of had the traction with, but when they had Dakota Fields and Marcellus Williams both commit and win the matter of what, like a couple weeks from each other, Zabian Brown, I think, kind of got a little cold on USC because of how loaded that cornerback room is. Now, with Dakota Fields going to Oregon, I wouldn't be surprised if USC circles back around. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Zabian Brown wanted to go to USC. He saw how loaded that cornerback room was and decided to go somewhere else. Now, obviously, flipping a commitment from Alabama is difficult, but I do think that USC at some point had the momentum in this recruiting battle and then lost it when they filled that class up. So with Dakota Fields leaving, I wouldn't be surprised if Lincoln Riley, Dante Williams turn around and go back to Xavier Brown, who's right in their backyard at modern day and say, Hey, we got a room for you. You're our guy. Let's see if you can get him in the class. Now, another guy in the secondary, especially in that cornerback room that it sounds like USC is in a really good spot for is Siona. Laulea, I practiced that before. The number one Juco uh, recruit in this 2024 class, 6'4, 185 pounds. You talk about speed, you talk about length. That is right what Dante Williams wants. You look at the guys he's recruited, he wants bigger cornerbacks. Siona Laulea is a guy that I think would be a perfect fit for USC to add to that cornerback class. And then the last guy that I think USC is in a relatively good spot for is four-star Jason Mitchell from St. John Bosco again, right in their backyard. And there's not been too much to be critical about with this Lincoln Riley staff in the sense of how they've gotten their talent and what they're doing with this roster. If there is one thing you might be a little bit critical of is that modern day St. John Bosco, those are still schools that you want to be recruiting and you want to be recruiting heavily. And they've lost a couple of those guys, right? Kingston, Billy Amusa, obviously, Xavier and Brown, we just talked about. Nate Frazier, the five-star running back, goes to goes to Georgia. I th That's the one flaw you have. And, like, it's been really fun to watch Lincoln Riley 
go into SEC territory, go into Florida, go into Texas and win some recruiting battles. Yes, you are a national brand and USC is going to be one of the best teams in the country, which allows you to recruit all over the country. That being said, I think it's really important to don't, don't forget what's in your backyard and all that talent. Guys like Xavier Brown, guys like Jason Mitchell, I wouldn't necessarily forget about. Now, there's another position that you, you want to talk about a little bit, right? Losing Dakota Fields, I still feel good about not only what USC has in their class, but some targets that they could pivot to and get on their board. Now, on the offensive line, you lose Manasseh at TT, and I, I'm a fan of what they have there. Makai Santa, I, I really, really like him coming from Texas. Jason Zandamella, who I heard you're still battling Florida State for, is one of the, the best centers in the country, super, super athletic. I like his game, and then you have Hayden Treeter coming in from Colorado. Probably want to add one more body on that offensive line, especially as you move into the Big Ten. You want to have that size. You want to have that depth in the trenches. A couple names that I will keep an eye on, and one is, and I'm just kind of holding out hope at this point for USC, five-star offensive tackle, the number one offensive tackle in this 2024 cycle, Brandon Baker. And again, you're seeing the trend. I think USC needs to get back a little bit to what's in their backyard. And Brandon Baker's a dude that he's getting recruited everywhere, right? Georgia, Michigan, Nebraska, Oregon, I think is his top choice right now. I think USC could really turn the heat up on a guy in Brandon Baker as well. And I wouldn't even go as far to say his teammate, DeAndre Carter, who plays right tackle at modern day, who I think would be more of an interior offensive lineman at the next level would be another really, really good fit for USC. Now, DeAndre Carter sounds like he's going to Auburn, but again, USC filled up that class relatively quickly in like a four week period. And that might've like guys who didn't want to wrap up their recruitment Maybe they kind of backed off USC a little bit, but as guys start decommitting and roster spots start opening up in those 2024 classes, I could see USC kind of turning back around and kind of turning the heat up on a guy in DeAndre Carter who might have been looking somewhere else because USC took Jason Zanamella, because they took Mikai Siena, because they took Manasseh Atiti. Now with Manasseh Atiti out of the class, that I think there's another spot on that offensive line and a guy in DeAndre Carter who can both play tackle and guard. I think you really like. So for USC fans, and the last thing I want to talk about is just what USC is doing is one, there are a lot of targets on the board for USC that I think they're still in the mix for, even if they're, whether they're committed, whether they're not committed. And then two, evaluating Lincoln Riley solely on his high school classes. No, I mean, I don't think anybody's saying Lincoln Riley's doing a bad job. I think he's done probably the best job of the new coaches that we've seen across the country in terms of overturning rosters adding talent to rosters. Lincoln Riley is going to be a guy that uses the transfer portal. And that's, that's just part of the talent acquisition phase. Now, do we think Lincoln Riley will bring 15 plus uh, recruits in the transfer portal every single year as he continues to build these high school classes up? No, I think it's going to go down to maybe eight to 10, but I do think Lincoln Riley will continue to use the transfer portal as a way to build talent and get young talent into your roster. I mean, again, you look back at some of the guys they added, Bear Alexander, he's going to be a second-year guy. Anthony Lucas, going to be a second-year guy. You can use the transfer portal as not only a one-year fix, but you can use that to build young talent in your roster as well. Lincoln Riley's done a really nice job of it. So we're not necessarily looking for USC to consistently have top five high school classes if they're also bringing top five, top three, top one classes in the transfer portal as well. And then you look at USC in this 2024 class, only 15 commitments, but you take a look at this number, 91.67 average commit ranking. That's pretty damn good. I mean, there are not many teams, even if you scroll up to top 15, top 10 classes that have much over 91. So if USC kind of continues to build this class out a little bit, you still think they're going to finish as a top 12 class in the country. And again, it, this is this is kind of the modern day recruiting where, yes, you used that. Uh, don't get me wrong. The high school class is extremely important, but Lincoln Riley, we haven't really seen other coaches as successful as Lincoln Riley building in the transfer portal. It worked brilliantly. I mean, that one year turnaround, I feel like people forget that was Lincoln Riley's first year as a head coach at USC. And that was a phenomenal season. And then he, I mean, you take a look at what they're going to do this year. It's really hard to argue with what Lincoln Riley's doing in terms of talent acquisition, and you give him a couple more years, I think this USC program is going to be at a really, really good spot, especially going into the Big Ten. 
Now, to close it out, I just want to say one, as a, I'm, as a pseudo USC fan, because of all the support you guys have shown, one, I'm not too worried about losing a few commitments. That type of stuff happens. And then two, want to ask you guys, drop some names in the comment section of guys that you would like to see added to this USC class. Again, even if guys are committed, you're seeing a lot of people. You, you haven't seen as many people commit this early to schools in the history of recruiting. And you're already seeing the decommitments and the flip commitments happen. So drop some names in the comment section of guys you think USC should pivot on back to and maybe add to this 2024 class. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the boys like you do. And if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll talk to y'all later.